Welcome back to series two of testing the tips where I, as an average golfer, test out some of the best golf tuition videos that I found from my fellow YouTubers. And first of all, I'll see if they work for me. And we're kicking things off in series two with a, uh, with a lesson from Chris Ryan Golf. Link will be in the description below. I'm going to be studying this thing. I'm going to find three very simple and effective ways of getting that ball onto that green. Right, so like I said, three different ways in which to get out of this bunker, but very different shot types. And the first one is if you're struggling to get out of a bunker, then this is a very simple technique just to make sure that you get from the bunker and onto that green, which is all important. The next step moves up a gear and it's then about trying to get some height onto your uh, bunker shot. So really getting some loft, flying it up in the air. That's the second shot. And the third and perhaps the most interesting for me is when you're looking to fly that ball just a little bit further for it to get out the bunker and run on. So when you've got a bit of distance to travel. And I've got to say, these methods are really, really effective as you've just seen. So what I will do is I'll provide my interpretation of Chris Ryan's instruction and I'll tell you how they work for me. Right, so shot type number one, and the first thing is the club selection. And when I say club selection, we're going to put plenty of loft on this. So I'm playing a 58 degree wedge. Chris suggests we look at a club with a lot of bounce on it. It's going to help us in terms of that bunker shot. Once we've got the club selection right, it's then about our technique. And the first thing to do is the widening of the stance. And I've got to admit, it was probably a little bit wider than I would normally play. It's then about flaring out those feet. That's the second thing. Ball position is slightly forward of center. So we've got our setup right. The next thing is our weight distribution. And our weight moves forward off our back foot or off our central uh, position right now. And it moves forward onto our left knee in a right-handers uh, perspective. And I've got sort of 60% of my weight now over onto that left knee. Address position is very much square up to the flag. We're not opening a stance. We're not getting clever right now. The club head is square. My body and alignment is square to the flag. And that's all we do at this point. We're in our normal position. The next thing is the takeaway. And the takeaway is to, as we go into the backswing, you wanna be forming an L shape when you're into that first part of the backswing. So into that L shape, but then it's that downswing and what we're looking to do from there that impacts on how this ball gets out. And what Chris explains is we're looking to, we're looking to enter at the sand behind the ball. So we're looking to hit sand, not ball. And the feeling or the understanding is that you're trying to lift sand and put sand onto the green. So we're not doing anything special right now. We're not going to, the important thing is again, do not decelerate. You're in your position. You've got your weight slightly forward. You've got the L shape and then it's into that ball with a normal swing and feel like we're going to put some sand onto the green. So let's give that one a go. Well, to be fair to Chris, it doesn't get much better than that, Chris. That's an absolutely perfect start. And as you can see, the ball flight was quite good. We're gonna look at the second phase of this about getting the ball high, but I've got to say that also popped the ball up quite high and I would take that any day of the week. But the important thing is, is we've got to get, like I said, if you're in that position right now where you're struggling to get out of the bunker, that's the first thing. Because what you don't want to do is take two or three swipes in here before you get on the green. Get it out of the bunker, onto the short stuff, and at least we've got that putter in hand. Right, that's step, or technique rather, number one. Let's step it up to the next level. Right, so next technique is all about getting some air on the ball. And uh, in a situation like this, where we've got a fairly steep um, bunker face in front of us, then it's certainly a big help. In terms of the video Chris done, in the first shot, he had a 54 degree wedge, and then he suggested add an, adding some loft to the club. I'm playing a 58 degree wedge again here. Now, first of all, with that club face, he's suggesting open it a little, but stay very much square at address, which is interesting. Stance again, slightly wider stance than we've just done on the first technique. Feet flared out, weight positioning is the same with sort of 60% onto that left hand side. So nothing's really changed at this stage, but the interesting one for me is he then suggests we're sort of slightly further away from the ball. And what that's then going to allow us to do is we're going to drop the handle lower. So we're going to require a bit of knee flex. We're going to be lower in our positioning, and then we're going to drop our hands down 
to a much lower position than normal. And again, Chris's uh, explanation of that, it allows us to get a lot more sort of rounded in our sort of, in our swing and our rotation. And it certainly makes sense, keeps loft on the ball as well, uh, on the club rather, which again, very much makes sense in his explanation. So the next thing we're looking to do and where the key difference is from sort of what we tried in the first phase to this, the takeaway is the same. So we've got our L shaped, but then when we come to the ball, when it's coming towards impact, first of all, the butt of the club is going to drive down towards the, uh, towards the ball, but then through impact, you're going to have the bottom hand, you're um, releasing under the, under the ball and passing your hands very quickly. So the hands almost stop in this position and the club head then quickly follows through at some speed. And the idea of that is we'll maintain that sort of loft on the ball, on the club head rather, and generate that speed, which is then gonna pop that ball up in the air in theory. I think I've covered every element of his instruction. Like I said, this is my interpretation, and the best thing to do is follow the link below and look at Chris's uh, explanation, which will be far greater than mine. But anyway, we're gonna give that theory a test. So I'm in position, club face slightly open, I'm gonna lower the hands and my body down in a much different position than I'd normally play this from. It's into that L shape, and that important thing is to release that uh, trail hand and feel as though it's really surpassing the, um, the, the club, the butt of the club rather. Right, let's give it a go. Now again, I've got to admit, I'm really impressed so far, Chris, with, uh, with your instruction. And I'm pleased with my execution, to be honest with you, because yet again, that's a really good shot and did exactly what we had hoped it would do and that your instruction led to. So it's a real different feeling. I must admit, I had a few practice goes at this one. It's a technique that was different uh, for me personally, but certainly that feeling of the club head passing the hands and the butt of the club through that impact position is, a, is, is alien to me, but it certainly did what you suggested and that's popped that ball up in the air, right? That's two techniques down. The third and final one is a real interesting one that is very much uh, of interest to me on a personal level. Right, third and final technique and the first thing we need is a change of club because what we're looking to do here is we're looking to get the ball out and we're looking for it to release. We're looking for it to travel a greater distance. So when we play the lofted club, the idea is the lofted club is very much going to come up, come down and pretty much stop. For this kind of shot, we want to get it out onto the green and for it to release and run out. So change of club, first of all, Chris went to a 9-9 I'm going to a pitching wedge. Basically, we're taking loft off. But then what he suggests is that we open the club face up just a tad and then we're going to grip down on the club as well. So that's the first thing in terms of relation to grip and uh, the club face. We then adopt that same wide stance, which has been pretty much prevalent throughout, but we're very much square to target on this one. Again, it's nothing to do with um, uh, uh, opening the stance or anything like that. Square to target, club head, although it'll feel slightly open because we just opened it, we're square at address still. The next key difference with this one is about the way in which, um, well, it's about the follow through, it's about the impact position, I suppose. So in all three of these techniques, we'll grip down a little bit on this one, but in all three, we've sort of got to this L position in the backswing. That's been the same with every technique. The difference has been through the three of them is how we've released that club head. And in this one, it changes again. So you're into the L position, 60% weight still forward, all those things still apply. But there's a difference here in the way we're gonna rotate round the body uh, rotate through the ball rather and feel like the club head is as far away from us as possible through impact I mean I'll be honest with you this one like I said I, I'm always scared of this shot I don't like playing I like playing a bunker shot with loft to make sure I get out so when I'm faced with this kind of shot it does worry me because I know in theory I should be playing the likes of a pitching wedge um, but it always worries me but anyway that's it, I mean, technique done. Like I said, into that L shape, and when we swing through the club head this time, we're gonna feel like it's as far away from us as possible. Talking's done, and can we make it three out of three? So grip down the club, position is the same. That's again, absolutely, it's, 
Well, it's carried again pin high, and uh, it was really interesting. That the, the interesting bit for me was not only did it sort of travel, we faced quite a, a steep lip there as well. So even with the pitching wedge in hand, when I'm assuming that we're going to sort of, we've lost loft, so therefore we're going to uh, not get that height, it still managed to do that if we're taking sand before ball. I've got two ball behind me waiting for me to get out of the bunker, so we'll do an evaluation somewhere else, I think. Well, it's the evaluation is quite a simple one. It was a great way to start off series two of testing the tips. I'm going to reiterate the point is my interpretation. Don't forget, I'm not a PGA professional. I'm very much the average golfer. But the idea is that I try these tips very much like you would do and try and decipher which are the good and which are the bad. And in this case, I thought Chris Ryan's videos explanations were really, really good, probably better than mine. So like I said, go and see his original video. There are no uh, magic potions in terms of helping you get out of bunker play. Ultimately, it's about practice, but you need to understand the technique first and foremost of how to get it out. So uh, at least you've then got something to practice with. So whichever one of those that you uh, like the look of or think might help your game, then get in a bunker and get practicing. And hopefully you haven't got a two ball chasing you up and cleaning you off out the way. Give me your feedback and comments down below. Uh, one last thing, if you've not watched series one, then uh, again, we'll put some kind of link on the screen right now for you and go and check out some of them. As ever, thanks for watching and I'll see you all soon.